my name is Asif Momin and uh, we are from Entrip Technology and these are my colleagues uh, Kiran, Asmita, Anuj. Okay. So uh, what is Entrip? Entrip is an enterprise mobility. Our core theme is to uh, help enterprises solving their uh, workforce productivity problem. Okay. So the app we are going to demo is, is we are developing this for a doorstep called uh, NGO called doorstep. So what does this NGO does? It? it kind of helps the children of the migration worker for education. So on a particular construction site, uh, the workers were they they are kind of nomad people, and they kind of travel across country depending on where the construction going on. So nobody take care of their their education. So this NGO's main aim is to like uh, on like a long term as well as short term. Long uh, short term is like uh, how how do we manage the education of these children? So the government kind of gives free education, but they struggle in terms of making sure that the attendance of the student is is adequate, and they also want to record. Uh, second is uh, the security of those students, and on a long term basis, what they want to do is they want to track uh, the student and make sure that there is a continuity. Because once the students travel to uh, across an area, there is like there is no track of it. How do you track those students? Make sure that if it's in fixed standard, like he gets continuity in that student. So that's what we are trying to help those NGO. Okay. So uh, 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 what what we are doing is like basically we have a, a mobile platform uh, which help enterprises to uh, develop this mobile app, and we have used this mobile platform. To this app. So what is this app does? It? it kind of solves both the problem and the existing app. Like uh, so, it helps to take attendance of a uh, student. So what we're trying to do is using QR code, the attendance would be taken. So the process is that like so, there's a bus which travel across, pick up the student, take to the school, and then drop back to the site again. Okay. So uh, this children would be given an I card which will have a QR code, and that is the existing functionality. So I can show that demo how. The it works. Okay. So this is the app. This is developed. You can log in and see uh, pick up. So you have, you have to select the route. There can be multiple route. Right now we only configured one route. Okay. So what you'll see is the list of students. Wi-Fi network and available. Okay, this is a demo time. All right. So it's a simple process. What you can do is like uh, I'll just simulate. So you just click on take attendance, and there's a QR code. So uh, which would be in the back of uh, back of the student ID card. So I'll just simulate how this would work. I'll just put the camera in. So now the attendance is taken. So if you go back there, is so the student for which the attendance is taken is kind of tick mark. Okay. So that's one. But second thing, what what will happen is in the real time basis, this data is reflected on the back end. So I can show you that on the. So that was the student for which we have taken the uh, attendance. Okay. So this was the existing functionality, and what uh, we are going to announce, like we announced this application today, and what we added is uh, uh, kind of three functionality. First is is the tracking of this device. It means in terms of we want to track the bus uh, uh, where it is currently, and second is what route the bus has taken. That's one. Second is the offline support. So as in India, like you won't find uh, network connectivity like all the places. So what the app would do is, if the network is not there, it will store uh, the data in the offline cache, and whenever the network connectivity is there, it will sync the data with the server. And third is the uh, localization support. Since many of those uh, 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 many of those operator doesn't know English, like we want to give that app in Marathi. So that's what we have planned for. And I can show you. So basically, what we have done is for the first uh, the uh, location tracking. Uh, there's a Android service kind of which is built here, which con kind of constantly send the location to the server. So we have some algorithm built in wherein we have kind of optimized the time 
like uh, the frequency so that the device uh, uh, power is kind of taken care of okay and uh, so i can show the demo of that Uh, okay, I can show from here. Yeah, AMD. Con con. Dot com. No, AMD. Dot com. Yeah. <coughs> Thomas. No, no, it's right to enter. No, oh, oh, yeah, enter. Admin at enter. Uh, slash. So you can see all the buses on the map, uh, the real time location in terms of where it was and what was the time it was seen and you can track a route of a particular bus. So you can, can click on track route. So this is the, if you see the red color, the route that, that is the route that the bus has taken. So this way uh, from the head office they can track where are the buses and uh, if the buses are de deviated from the standard. So that is the first feature. So the way it's done is that on the platform we have certain convention. Like if you write a particular resource in a certain way, it can be treated as a location. Okay. So second feature, what we have done is is a kind of localization, which is so if you have seen the app is in two languages, which is in Hindi, uh, English, and uh, Marathi. So if I click on Marathi. So go back to the login. Yeah. Go back to the login. Yes. You can okay. show it. Yeah. So Marathi. So again, you can see in Marathi now all the Switching pickup drop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that is the second feature and third feature is kind of like I cannot simulate that now but which is the localization. What it does is simply uh, it detects uh, the network connectivity and put the data in the offline cache. Okay and there we have done some kind of innovation. Uh, so uh, wh what we do is basically uh, the way network connectivity is in India like there is no guarantee that first thing the data would be reached to the server that's one. Second thing is that even if the data is reached to server and written back in the da its database, uh, the response can lost within the network connectivity. So what we do is we consider every transaction and we send a transaction ID. So that way it's kind of uh, identity ported. So even if there are for the same transaction ID the multiple rights, server kind of ignores that. So you can show the right now there's no network. So yeah. And so if you see there are no network. The and bus can, route is there. Yeah. So it picks up a yeah. offline from the offline storage a list of students. So that yeah. uh, you are not uh, this thing, and you can record the attendance. And whenever, even manually, you can record. Yeah. Oh, so that feature is there. So basically, yeah. you can also manually record that, and that was the existing feature itself. I think uh, that's it. Really, anything you want to add or questions? So what are its tags to use? Okay, so the uh, stack is on the mobile side, it's basically the uh, uh, packaging with phone gap, but it's mainly the JavaScript, CSS, HTML5. HTML5, JavaScript, packaging with phone gap, yeah. that's, the, that's a standard yeah. use. And we have like kind of the, the, so the platform have, as a, yeah. uh, So we have um, JavaScript libraries that we use for, uh, you know, APIs getting uh, and writing data. So what we have added to this uh, is the offline support today, that you see. Um, and um, the, our uh, entire uh, mobile backend as a service is uh, built on Java. And now we've recently built, uh, not today, but the, what you see is the management console that we have uh, built. That's, that's on Ruby on Rails platform. Uh, that's on Ruby on Rails. And you 
use uh, Postgres and MongoDB as a database. So when you say Postgres and MongoDB, do you say PostGIS for st storing the location data or...? No, not really. So location data is also stored in MongoDB because MongoDB, like uh, at least for our use case, the MongoDB, whatever uh, location thing provided uh, is sufficient. So Postgres is essentially used as a uh, metadata to define all the metadata, to define uh, access control. So you can have role-based access uh, or site-based access. All of this is defined in Postgres and all the... Uh, data writing happens to MongoDB, so we, we take advantage of the fast read and write. So we are kind of mix of both relational and non-relational, so try to get advantage of both. That's essentially what we do. Okay. So you talk about encryption Yeah, so what uh, the other thing we do a uh, little bit uniquely in the platform is, uh, so we encrypt directly from the mobile right up to uh, Tomcat instead of you know uh, only over going only going over HTTPS, we encrypt right up to the application and we can even go right up to the database if needed. Uh, that's uh, one more thing. Other thing we do is um, you can uh, we have a full fledged reporting engine based on MongoDB, uh, which even you can fire uh, SQL type queries. Uh, it can interpret SQL type queries to give you results. So if you know SQL and you are new to MongoDB, you could trick this route and uh, get it. So there are multiple things. One is like uh, SQL like queries for MongoDB as well as the kind of DSL uh, which provides a nice interface to, to it's, it's kind of similar to what MongoDB aggregation uh, framework provide but it's in a uh, nice DSL format. So that we have developed probably some time back when that uh, aggregation uh, one was in a premature way. How do you send the location data? So start ID, then after 10 minutes or after a kilometer has traveled or how okay, do so you So it is actually a, um, a little bit of a uh, tricky thing that we do. Um, if you set it to a timer based, say every 3-4 minutes, then you will drain the battery. There is another feature in most phones, uh, in uh, Android and this, in which uh, it can detect the change in location. Um, say every n meters, so n could be 100, 200, whatever, and it will tell you that my location and change. Again, there are multiple factors that if you use a network provided or a GPS provided, um, if you use both, you're again draining the battery, right? So you, you have to decide how much accuracy you want based on that, you choose one, or you could choose both. Um, secondly, once the location change, say you define it for 100 meters, uh, you can also say that 100 meters uh, at a frequency of uh, n minutes. So it, it will check automatically at a frequency of n minutes and if the change is more than 100 meters, it will let you know. So given the experimenting that we've done, what we found is that if you um, want to, uh, at a kind of macro level, you can get away with testing or checking every 20 minutes. And this we have actually created a uh, configuration on the server. So using our backend, you, you just define what is the frequency and what is the distance. And then you can uh, change it at runtime as well, so that uh, the worker's uh, location updates can be got at whatever frequency you want. So right now it's at 20, yeah. mi 20 minutes and right. So it's all depends meters. on like, so whatever in the lab we are testing 20 minutes, fine, but you may find on the field, depending on the device capabilities, the battery may be training sooner. So you, you can change those configuration from the server itself. And uh, the other uh, feature that we have is every um, right request that goes also sends the location coordinates. So you know where the data has been captured. So this is like two independent things. So you can uh, kind of cross verify you need or location service uh, tracking can be a separate feature as well. So that's also something unique that we do. So you also mentioned like you can do an encryption till the Tomcat level. How does hmm. it different from running a HTTPS? So HTTPS typically will go up to only your front. So in a typical horizontal scalable model, you'll have a, a load balancer and then you have application servers, right? So when you have a load balancer, you'll end, the, end up HTTPS at the front or is Apache. And then after that, it's going to be a normal, this thing. So we our encryption goes directly at, to the app level, uh, especially in a multi-tenant scenario, if you want people to be more Secure. You can have one system for one particular customer itself, right? One instance, for example. Uh, 
uh, is still using the same load balancer the customer gets to f see that the data is encrypted right up to their instance. That. Data you could have that as well. So we, uh, since we're using MongoDB, uh, you could uh, set up sharding according to whatever keys you want. So if you could define a key set based on uh, customer and something else, so it would put it automatically in a um, customer-specific shard. Uh, in most cases, in what we have seen, in, uh, so we are in India specifically, we are targeting small and medium businesses. Um, for them, cost is of prime importance. Then. You know, saying that okay, my data exists along with some other uh, customer, but it's still it's a multi-tenant system. So uh, we just have to simply explain how we make it multi-tenant, and they are okay with that. That's the feedback that we've got from this. But if there are customers that say that you know, you know, we want our data storage to be separate, it's just a configuration change for us. And then that we we obviously will charge them slightly more because of the storage instance that we.